Hello, 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 and today I have a new tutorial for you, and this tutorial is going to be a water and sand material that is combined in one material so you don't have to separate objects. And what that does, basically, it saves you render time because your light won't have to travel to, um, between two objects, it will have to travel through one object, and that will be significantly faster. And I will show you how to set this up, how to control this, and yeah, in this beautiful tutorial today. So let's get started. At first, we need a plane. Let's just scale this up a bit. Yep, that sh should be fine. Let's apply the scale. Um, let's edit mode subdivide. We want 20 subdivisions here. And then let's add... Ah, oh, before I forget, we are on, ex on experimental, of course. And I've already set up a small background scene so we can actually see what we are doing. Just so you're not surprised. Let's add in a division surface here. And let's go over to shading. First, we are going to deal with the sand material because that is easier and way more quickly done. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a color ramp. We can already duplicate this because we need two of these. I want the base color. And the first one we are gonna basically make like a nice sand color. This can look however you want it to look. And then we are gonna grab a mass grave texture. Put this into here, hide this into factor, control T, delete the mapping, you know the drill. Object to vector, and the scale we want a scale of two. Details max, dimension zero, and this looks pretty cool. Just yes, this is exactly what we want. So, let's how it goes, and we are going to warren texture. So let's get a warren texture here. Plug this into here, distance can already go into factor, object goes into vector, change so F1 to smooth F1, and we can preview this, of course, scale goes to 400. And you have like small sand corns, you can maybe 300 is fine, I think. Yes, that's fine. Details goes to 0 0.3, roughness goes to, well, it stays here, and we're just going to bring this a tiny bit more here, and there's a tiny bit more here. So we get more contrast out of this, right? And then we are gonna make a bump node. Not that, what a bump node. Put this here and strength goes down to 0 0.2. Let's preview it. We have a tiny, tiny amount of bump now every, every, everywhere. Shouldn't really be too noticeable. But it's there, and that's the point. Oh wait, I didn't, I didn't put it in. No, I no, I put it in. So yeah, that shouldn't be too no noticeable, but it should do a bit. And what we are now gonna do is we are gonna make, create some waves at the bottom. So we can duplicate this Voronoi. Put this to here. Control T again. Delete the mapping. Over into vector. And let's press Control Zero. Get in a mix node. Put this mix node here. This one goes into the bottom, this one goes on the top, and we're going to change the factor to 0 0.085. And we are going to bring in a wave texture. And let's plug in the vector and let's preview this. Of course, we don't want the scale of 300 here, we want to scale of around 6. Max detail, of course, we want it to look cool. And you want a scale of two here. Oh, maybe probably higher. Let's go. I think five is fine. Distortion. We want eight point seven. Yes, that looks about right. Detail obviously gonna max be maxed out. Oh, sorry, we don't want any detail here. We want zero detail. I mean, maybe. No, we want zero. We want zero detail here. And it does scale 1.6. Yes, that looks about right. So then let's make a second bump. Color into height. Bring this outwards a lot. Preview. And strength 0 
Uh, I think it can be a bit less. 0 0.6 I think is fine here. But I still think if we look at this that we have too much kringles here. So I think I'm going to turn on the distortion a bit. Yeah, I think distortion. I mean, do we. Uh, five, I think it looks better. And we are going to max out the detail here because that just feels better. Okay, let's preview this again. Immediately way better. Of course, this is going to lag your viewport. So, because it has an adaptive subdivision, but it looks great. So, we're going to now add the water to this. How we are going to do this is basically we're going to create a new shader. So create a mixed shader here. So let's plug this here somewhere. And we need a glass shader. So get a glass BSDF. So this goes in the top part. Give it like a bluish tint. Something like this probably. Get it a transparent. This goes into the bottom. And now we're going to need a light ray. Sorry, a light path. And the is shadow ray it goes into the factor. Then we're going to need a volume. So we are going to... We can already duplicate this mix shader and put this here. And this goes into the bottom. I'm just going to set this to 1 for now. And we are going to go... A volume absorption. Put this here. And then we are going to need an add shader. So add shader goes into here. Volume in, into the bottom. And we're going to need a principled BSDF again. And this goes into the top. And we're going to give this a nice blue. And this a nice blue too. This is basically what is more or less going to be the color of your water, these these two. And these go into the volume. Go ahead and notice, hmm, doesn't look great. I'm just going to add a cube so you can see what is, what is happening. Doesn't doesn't look too great. How is that? Well, you got to take all of this and push it down. We need depth in this material. So apply scale. Alt N. We can cut it outside. Reset vectors, and now you are starting to see mm, this could go somewhere, right? Well, yes. What we are now going to do is we are going to create a displacement for the water. So for this, you are going to go into the material, uh, into the settings, and change this from bump only to bump and displacement. And we are going to bring in displacement nodes. We're just going to take all of this and bring this a bit down. So let's get a noise texture here and displacement. Displacement into displacement. Factor into height, of course. Control T, delete the mapping, run on texture coordinate, object to vector. And we now want to. Oh, Instead of 2, we of course want to scale way down, on like a scale of 0 0.2. This, I think, looks great. And you can start to see we are getting somewhere, right? If you, if you change this color now, you can, you can see the color of the deep water changes. If you change this color, the overall surface water changes. Same with this, right? You can, right? This is the surface water. You put this to, I think again, it's of course not going to look very white. But this is kind of like the depth, like the depth of the water is gonna like the actual refraction will 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 have this color. Okay, let's go and make it a bit more tropical, or well, something like this. This already works well. Now you you already have a material that works, right? You can of course go up a bit detail here. Let's put the detail to three. I think that's pretty cool. You can, of course, play with the displays when you want more waves. You can go to 0.3 or even higher, right? But I wouldn't go much higher than 0.4, I feel like. But I'm going to keep it to 0.3 for our case. So, but how do we get the sand into 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 here now? Well, that's pretty simple. It's going to add a separate XYZ 
put this here. You are going to grab, you're going to just gonna press Ctrl T. Need the image, but not the mapping this time. We need the mapping. Vector into vector. Get a color ramp. Here, color into factor. And Z into factor here. What you can do now is you're going to bring this very, very close, like very, very close. Um, because it's lagging, we are going to go to material preview because this is lagging a lot. Oh, we, we, we're just going to go to, I think... Okay, it, it, it will be fine. We'll just have to be fast. But yeah, it is lagging a lot. So with this, basically, you can now control when the sand starts and when the water starts. Yep. So if we go... We're slowly getting somewhere. Yeah, because because if you be sorry, you have to go vector here. Yep, vector, and then you can control this pretty easily. Yep, and now if you look from from the top, you have sand down there. If I disable this, oops. If I, if I disable this, you have no sand. Sand, and and you can see the sand very well, and this basically scales with the height of your object. Like of course, if I would scale this up, right, you would see, and I would apply the scale, right, you would see l less sand, right, just because the water is deeper. But I think this is a pretty nice, like, if you're like a, a part of the, of your scene where you need, like, flat water that needs to have wa um, something underneath it, I think this is a very nice way of doing it. Like, you obviously don't see much in the preview because this is very, this is very, very render intensive. But due to the fact that we have the sand built into the the water, it saves a lot of it saves it saves a lot of lot of render time. You can of course control how much you want the sand to blend here, but but of course it advertises you to make this really really small, so that you have more or less like a very straight line where the sand stops and the water begins. But yeah. You know, of course, you see, you see, you see, you still have refra re re refractions, right? You can s still see in it. And if I would go in here and change the density, for example, I say, oh, okay, I want, want it to be less dense, 0.4. You're going to see more from the sand underneath it. I can say, okay, well, I want more density. I can go up in density, and suddenly you, you won't see much from the thing beneath it. So yeah, this is like a very good control object for the for the whole scene. But yeah, I think this is a very, very nice shader that gives you a lot of power at your, uh, that just has a lot of power and has a lot of tools that you can use. And I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.